as we read the scriptures, some of the instances will surely get our attention. If we are reading carefully, one of them relate to the whole issue of Esau and Jacob. Let's read the first scripture in Romans chapter 9, verse 10 to 13. And not only these, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one man, even by our father Isaac, for the children not yet being born, not having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to the election, my stand, not of works, but of him who calls, it was said to her, the older shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. The Apostle Paul is putting a very serious emphasis on the fact that even before these children were born, God picked one by ordination and disqualified the other. From human perspective, it seems, at least, that this is a bit unfair because one could be said to have been advantaged while the other one is disadvantaged before even they are born. But at the same time, the Bible revealed to us by Peter the following. In Acts chapter, 30, chapter 10, verse 34 to 35, that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fear him and works righteousness is accepted by him. So if it is true that indeed God is not partial, why did he reject Esau? As the Apostle Paul, even before the man had a chance to do anything good or bad? This is an important question. Why would it seem like God has some favorite some time? Why did God love one and hated the other? Why would God reject this man from the womb of his mother at the same time? He would tell somebody like Jeremiah that he was being ordained prophet before he was formed in the womb of his mother. What is going on? This is the focus of today's video. We are going to delve into this issue of Esau. If you are interested, stay with me. Welcome to the Berean tribe. Greetings, my brethren. I trust you are doing well by the grace of God. Welcome on the Berean tribe. We will embark yet again on a journey through scriptures, just like the Berean that we mentioned in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Let's delve right into this issue of Esau. To set the background, let's go to the, the, the heart of the issue, the heart, the scripture that's focused on this. Before reading that, one can also look into Genesis chapter 25, verse 20 to 23, where God is making um, known to the mother about the two nations in the womb. But let's go straight to Genesis chapter 25, verse 29 to 34. There it is written. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I'm weary. Therefore his name was called Edom, meaning red. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die, so what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank arrows and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Now, I want us to take a deep dive and examine the behavior and the mindset of this young man to draw a few lessons, a few things out for us. The first thing I want us to look at is in verse 32, when it is written, And Esau said, Look, I am about to die, so what is this birthright to me? Now, remember, this is a young, strong man known to be a hunter, being in the field, running, hunting. So, he is probably a young man that is super fit. And are you sure that this young man is going to die of hunger at this point in time? The 
very essence of his response to his brother is very similar to what one can read in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 15, where it is written, So I commend enjoyment because a man has nothing better under the sun than to eat, drink, and be merry. For this will remain with him in his labor all the days of his life, which God has given. God gives him under the sun. So the mindset is very close to what is called today YOLO. You live only once, eat and drink, tomorrow we die. But when we read scripture, we have to be very careful about what is godly and what is not. God took the life of a rich man because this one has gathered stuff, gathered stuff in his barn and wanted to celebrate. God called him a fool and took his life. Scripture can be found in Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to 21. The biblical position on this matter is that it does not profit a man to be full, to eat and drink, but his soul is lost. Now, Paul in the scriptures revealed to us that this mindset of Esau is only valid if there is nothing after life. More specifically, if there is no resurrection, if there is no eternity, then this testament can hold. But if there is life after death, then this way of thinking comes from a corrupted mindset, a fallen mindset. This scripture can be found in First Corinthians verse 15. Uh, sorry, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32. There it is written. If in the manner of man I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me? If the dead do not rise, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. So once I have said that, let me balance this. Let me balance this by saying that it is not that God does not want us to enjoy these things. It is... The will of God for us to enjoy these things, but there is a balance. Let's look in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. There it is written, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. So here we see the balance. The verse 17 shows that one of the reasons that God is giving us richly is because he wants us to enjoy these things. But we should not trust in these things. And as good steward, we should also use it with a consciousness of eternity. So coming back to the parable of Jesus, uh, of the rich man, the rich man in the par this parable it can be found in um, Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to 21. We did not read it, but the, the very foundation of the story is that the rich man did not understand that God is the provider of all good things. He began to show trust in his riches, but the author of life showed him that he is foolish. The very first conclusion from our discussion so far is that Jacob was a fool in scriptural term because he was short-sighted he did not look beyond the moment the bible is saying that these you live only once mindset is foolishness because there is life after death which is more important than the time-based life so as we can the bible is recommending is revealing the will of god for us to be able to enjoy these things it is important for us to bear in mind uh, eternity while we are doing so. That's the balance. Second point, building upon the previous point, the man Esau chose to sow in the flesh. He sowed in the flesh rather than sowing 
in the spirit. Now, as we all know, flesh has been condemned because it has been determined that it profited nothing. Same verdict was made, interestingly, about Esau that he cannot profit anything. So God would not invest in this man. He invested, the man himself invested in flesh and reaped corruption. We can also see a picture of the eternal impact of the choice that he made. A whole nation until today bears the name of the other brother who carries the blessing as a result of him relinquishing his birthright. Now, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 8, we can read, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit we will also reap everlasting life. It is because of hunger that Israel became slave in Egypt for 400 years. The father Isaac wanted to leave for Egypt and and where there was a famine in the land for the first time. And God told him not to go, but this, to stay there. And um, for this is where the promise um, were, the promises of God were. And he's prospered there. The Bible says he sowed in that land and reaped a hundredfold. Because of famine later on, Jacob will send his children in Egypt to buy grain because of famine again. And the people will be there in captivity for 400 years, far from the promised land. Brethren, do not settle for Egypt because of hunger. Wait to hear from God as Isaac. So the question for us is, how are we investing our lives? Are we investing more into the spirit or are we investing more into the flesh? Third point is that Esau lacked an understanding of the value of spiritual things. Esau lacked an understanding of spiritual things. You see, he lacked in the understanding of the value of the birthright because it was nothing that is tangible enough to him. So he did not deserve it in the first place. You see, there is a system value uh, in the kingdom of God and it is found in Matthew chapter 7, 7 verse 6. Matthew chapter 7 verse 6. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearl before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. These are character traits. Dogs, swine. These are character traits that will not inherit valuable things in the kingdom, valuable spiritual things. Having to be able to measure the value of the spiritual things is important for us to be, be able to walk in these things. If we don't value them, there is no way God will give them to us. So this is Jesus speaking. Fourth, the last verse that we read in Genesis chapter 25 summarizes very well uh, the behavior of the young man where it is written, Deus Esau despised his birthright. He made mockery of his birthright. Now, the question for us today is, how do we despise our birthright in our lives in these days? First, when we do not contend against the enemy, we give up too easily when we are tempted. We are giving up our birthright. We are despising our birthright. When we are not spiritually minded, although we are born of the Spirit, we are being we are being we are being um, less considerate of our birthright. We are being we are making mockery of our birthright. When we spend hours feeding, sowing in the flesh, while we do not do so for our spirit, we are out of balance. And this is also making mockery of our birthright. When we yield our members to sin, we are renouncing our birthright. 
when we do not value the things of God, although we are called a chosen generation, we are making mockery of our birthright. Now, let me close by a very important warning by the Apostle Paul that could be found in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 to 17. There it is written, See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance right as the oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit his blessing, he was rejected. Even though he sought the blessing with tears, he could not change what he had done. You see, when we read Genesis chapter 25, we just saw a young man eating a meal and, you know, uh, relinquishing his birthright, but eating meal. But the Apostle Paul is showing us that there is more to what he did, spiritually speaking, comparing it to sexual immorality or godlessness. This is very important because when we are godly, um, the Bible talks about the love of God constraining us. The way become narrow. We don't just do anything anyhow. So uh, it, it, it's having a, being godly will, 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 will impose on us certain choices that we can make and some other choices that we cannot make. We will value spiritual things. The interesting example of immorality that the Apostle Paul is giving us here is that sexual immorality always advertises the pleasure you can get now, but with long-term consequences, like he said, with tears. This is the essence of the way the enemy tempts men. He, he, there is an advertisement of a short-term gain, a short-term benefit, but then you forfeit something of great value in the long run. It brings short-sightedness into an emphasis. Joseph, for instance, took a different road when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him, but he got a greater reward in due time, as we know very well. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25 to 26, we see the choice of Moses. Moses also chose a different route, for it is written, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh, daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God that than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. So it is very clear again here that there is a trade-off there is a choice to be made between the passing pleasures of sin and the eternal dimension the eternal reward and moses saw that and make the right choice which is not the case of Esau. so today i pray for the actualization of the spirit life let our heart be recalibrated to value that which God himself values. Let us have this kingdom mindset. Let us be free from the spirit of Esau. For this spirit is still rolling in the world today by the lifestyle that it generates, by the mindset that it enforces and we see it in the world we are not of the world thank you for joining the tribe today did this video bless you please share in the comment section feel free to share the lessons that you may have learned from the story of Esau if you are blessed by this channel please remember to like to subscribe and share remain blessed until we meet again amen